if you download Xcode, um, there's a thing called the Quartz Debugger, and you can enable uh, the high DP display modes. Now, it does work kind of goofy. What you do is you have to log out. When this thing, when you check this, you log out like you'd log out of your computer, log back in, and then these modes are available to you. And all you have to do is open up your preferences and select the scaled version and go down to what's called the high DPI. You notice that they're kind of small. It's going to be relatively large, but you will see what it can do. So we'll do that um, part of this video. However, because of the quartz debugger is running while this video is running, um, the system is kind of slow. Also, to be able to see it, you're going to have to build out uh, applications. So you need to have access to uh, building to the Mac. OK, so let's take a look at what we got. So I just made a, a dummy window. Uh, no toolbar yet, but I do have that in my project. <clears throat> so let's open up that toolbar by double clicking. Now, there is a toolbar there, but there's nothing added to it. Um, the best way I found to support the high resolution toolbars is to do all the toolbar code by script, which is relatively easy. So, what first we need to do is go back into our main window, go to our project controls, and just drag our toolbar out into the canvas. And now it should be ready here. So within our open event, we need to basically build up our toolbar. So I was thinking, first of all, let's take a look at some um, icons I dragged in here. So I have one, two, three, four. I have four icons, a low res and a high res. And if you've ever made a, a menu within a title bar, I'm sure you have uh, done this before. So I'm going to do something like... Since I have a book, I have one called My Book, and this will be a new tool button, okay? And I'm going to go all the way down and do that for all these. So I'm going to have My Date, Dim, My Lock, Dim, say my magic and then we we'll also want to add some flex space so I'm gonna have one called my flex okay and since I'm so lazy I'm just gonna take the rest of this and go down and sort of copy and paste the rest of it in there yeah I know okay now, I'm not sure if you've seen um, my video that I had on uh, retina-based pattern fills, but I'm going to take the same method that I had, this retina support thing, again, um, and do relatively the same thing that I did with that particular thing, but I'm going to put it in the tool event. Okay, so I'm back. Yeah, like I said, this uh, course debugger, when it's running in the background, and you're trying to do a video, it doesn't work very good. So I had to shut down uh, Real Studio and start it back up. So we're going to put this uh, retina support. Uh, if retina support is greater than 1, then that means we're in uh, 2x, which we're in the retina-based display. And uh, else, if we're not, we are in the 1x mode. And then we can end if. Again, we're going kind of slow on this thing again. I might have to just turn off the quartz debugger and break the video up into pieces and edit it later. Okay, so first of all, when you uh, do a toolbar by um, code, there's a couple things that we need to do. So we usually need to put a caption. And then from there, we need to usually put a name of the toolbar item so we go back and we can refer to it in our action event. And a style and an icon. Well, the icons we're going to do uh, in this if statement based upon if it's 1x or 2x. 
in, obviously. So I'm going to go through each one of these and put that down first. So we're going to be needing a dot caption equals, and I'm just going to go through and do each one of these now. Caption, 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 and then after caption, let's put a name equals. And so each one of these will have a name. Okay, and then we'll put a style equals tool button dot and I think there's one called tool style okay like there's tool style push button if I believe that's right so we just want to make a push button and so I'm going to grab this and make all of them really all the same thing and then this flex one will have a style equals tool button flex so let's see tool button dot tool style and I think it's called flex space or something oh, flexible space there we go gotta love that and then down here these items just need icon equals on it's a little slow again let me hit save to make sure it saves itself. Okay, so for the book, I'm just going to say book, and then we'll give it a name. I always start with TB, lowercase, and then whatever I want to call it. And really what we need this for is the action event. Okay, and the caption for this, let's just say this is date, and then let's do something like TB date. And again, let's do something like lock, TB lock, and then last, let's just do magic, TB magic. Very simple. Okay, so that should be all we need there. And then, um, back in here was our icon, so we have book. Cal, Magic, and Lock, and then we have a 2x version. So we should be able to figure that out. So let's see, book. For 2x, we'll load the 2x based uh, icons, which are 64 uh, pixels square. And the 1x are 32 pixels square. And then at the end, all we need to do now is uh, append our toolbar, so I'll say me append, and I'm going to do, let's see how many I have here, I have four items, but I'm going to do two flex spaces, so that's six items, so two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so let's start off with my book first. And then we'll do, say, a flex. So flex space. <clears throat> then I'll do my date. And let's say we do my lock. Then let's do another flex space, my flex. And finally, let's do my magic. OK. Now, when we run this, because um, right now we're in regular 1x, we would only see the 1x version. Also, if we ran uh, this and built this and immediately uh, run this in a 2x version, um, nothing would happen unless we add um, a key. And it's a property list key. And just for the heck of it, um, I'm going to put that on screen here so you can see it. I'll comment it out. So the key that we need to add, oops, 
and obviously it's a, a, a two thing. So the property list key is key NS high resolution capable, and then we want to make that true. When that's in the property list and you're on the retina based display, only then will this code up here work, this retina based code. Otherwise, it will not work. So that's something that you should know. Okay, so first of all, let's just run it and see if it builds our toolbar. Oh, looks like we do have something that doesn't like. So let me see if date, I believe, if I remember right, that actually was called cow, right? It wasn't called date. Uh, if I remember right, in my head, the icon was called cow. So let's type that back in there again. Let's hit save and let's just run that real fast and see if that fixed it. And sure enough, so as you can see, uh, in a regular 1x space, it did build our toolbar. Um, the items are flexing. So that's great. So now let's do this. We're going to build the application. So let's hit build. And there's the application right there. Now I'm kind of getting a system performance problem. I can hear my uh, computer fans speeding up. So I'm going to pause this right here. Okay, so I restarted my uh, video so I could dump some memory because again uh, if you're ever doing video with the quartz debugger it does take a lot of system resources. It's very costly. Okay. So the thing that you need to do at this point is open the package contents and you will need to change the plist editor uh, or the plist settings. You can just drag this into like say text edit and it brings this up. Um, now I already have a version which I've already taken care of and I have a folder here it's called my app retina here. Maybe. Okay and I should be right back now. <laughs> So here is the one that I have fixed. Uh, let's open that into text edit. Yeah. Okay. So uh, as you can see, this is where I added it. Um, NS high resolution capable. Make that true. So all I'm going to do is make a new folder here. I have uh, made some other ones prior to doing this video to make sure it worked. Okay. I'm just going to copy this property list. And where is the one that we just saved? It's right here. I'm going to drop this into folder number four. I should have kept that open if I didn't think about it. So I'm going to open this up. Now I already copied the good P list. I'm just hit paste. It's going to ask me if I want to replace it, which I certainly do. And now if I go back into this, now, I'm not going to run the retina based thing right now. I want you to see what it looks like um, non retina. So let's just launch it. What I should have done actually is not change the property list. So you could have seen what it looked like if you didn't do so. But we could build another one out in a second. Okay, so now since we're enabled here, what you need to do is go down to one of these high DP things, which we're going to do. Hopefully, the video has no problem with that. Um, seemingly it doesn't. Okay, so we want to keep this sort of open. And let's see where we can find the debugger version was open. And you can see our toolbar is nice and crisp. And everything on our display here is nice and crisp. 